Hello everybody, welcome back to Tin Man Collections and today I'll be doing my monster movie collection. Now, I could have incorporated that with the, the Dracula movies, but I wanted to do these separately. So, starting off with one of my favorite Universal Monsters of all time, Frankenstein. Boris Karloff's portrayal of the monster cannot be unbeaten, I'm telling you. He was good at the monster. And then they did a sequel called The Bride of Frankenstein. And the bride did not even like them, so kind of rejected them. I like those, but I also like when they did. This is a double feature: Son of Frankenstein. He came back for the part one more time, and he was wearing a brown fur coat over him, and then he fell into a pit of uh, sulfur, and then he got encapsulated, and they thought he was dead. And then Ghost of Frankenstein, Lon Chaney Jr. took over. As the monster. Uh, I'm sorry, but I mean, uh, Boris Karloff was the Frankenstein monster. I'm sorry about Long Chain. He did, he did the part good, though. But then when they did Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, they got Bela Lugosi to play the monster, and he he just didn't look the right as the part. But and then I got House of Frankenstein. Now, Glenn Strange is the monster. I'm done. Him and Boris were better at it. And um, I don't have. Uh, I'm going to have to make an update video sooner or later, but I don't have House of Dracula, and he was in it as the Frankenstein monster, but then he came back with Bela and Long Training Jr. and to be the Frankenstein monster, and Abbott Costello meets Frankenstein, and it's got Dracula and the Wolfman in it as well. That was a lot of fun, and then years later they did I, Frankenstein with Aaron Eckhart. And I didn't get the storyline at first because uh, he like he's the creature like from the book, and then all of a sudden these demons start trying to find him, and then the angel gargoyles right here try to either destroy him or try to keep him hidden, and they gave him some weapons right here because they think he was an abomination uh, man pretty much, and then Victor Frankenstein came out with uh, Daniel Radcliffe and James McAvey. I don't know if that's his name last name, but he's playing Victor Frankenstein. They first started off with a monkey, and then later on they built this big, enormous man with two hearts and two uh, set of lungs, two sets of lungs. Now this one I haven't watched yet, but it's the Frankenstein theory. This is from the creators of Last Exorcism. I think this is some sort of either document, yes, yeah, a documentary. I, I bet, I guess. But the monster look, looks like a gargoyle or something. But anyway, next, I don't have all the movies for this series, but The Invisible Man. I love the concept of being invisible, I'm, I'm telling you. But, um, Mr., uh, what was the guy, that, was it Claude Rains that played him in this one? Yeah, Claude Rains, yeah. yeah. He was crazy as The Invisible Man, I tell you. But then they had so many other sequels, and then I got a new one, which I haven't watched yet, but uh, I'm definitely going to watch this with Dad. Dad wanted to see this too. There's a whole new telling. Blumhouse looks like they did a good job. <laughs> Next, The Mummy. Now, I got this one. This is the only one from Hammer that I have that Christopher Lee played the mummy. It seems like when they first started out with Hammer movies that Christopher Lee played the Frankenstein creature in the first Frankenstein movie. Then he started off with the Dracula movies but, and then did The Mummy. I said, But he's more better as Dracula, in my opinion. Then they did... A trilogy, The Mummy. Uh, I don't know what can I say about this one, but uh, I loved how they used like a book to trick the mummy into losing his immortal powers. And then the sequel, The Mummy Returns. He's back, they're back, he's back. But they had Dwayne Johnson as the, the Scorpion King, and then they spin off of the Scorpion King movies. But, um,. I don't know what I can say about anything else about this one, but this one's like off the chart. I mean, she kept kissing him too. I mean, it looks like, oh my, romantic. Then they did the third one, but the lady that was in the first two did not come back to play his wife in this one. Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. And they got Jet Li playing the Emperor. I love the story of how they, they went to ancient China and had like all these ancient Chinese warriors rise up to help fight the emperor, I mean, help the the emperor and his uh, new modern day army, and then they had the other ones that were like uh, stuck, 
and they wanted to fight back, so they helped out too. But um, they were going to make a fourth one, I know, but it was going to be like one in Brazil. <laughs> but they never got around to doing it, and then they did this mummy with Tom Cruise. And this time it's an Egyptian woman mummy. Her eyes split, pupils split. I don't know if you see that. They're split in two. I don't know. Oh my god, that looks creepy. Then we got the Underworld movies, which is almost like a combination of werewolf and vampire movies. First off, you got Underworld 1 with Kate Beckinsale, And then Underworld Revolution and uh, her and her boyfriend. I don't, I don't want to say nothing, but uh, <laughs> had a love scene in here. <laughs> and then in the fourth one, they had a kid. But anyway, the third one, Rise of the Lycans, talks about the, uh, the werewolf leader. Was in love with uh, the vampire's uh, vampire king's daughter. And he didn't like that, so he ended up... I don't know why would a man kill his own daughter just because uh, they were in love with each other. They didn't want no hybrid baby. And then they had Underworld Blood Wars, and then... Um, I forgot if she got killed or something, and these vampires in this other uh, legion or religion made her hair turn white in, or white in some places, and she started wearing a white coat, and I, I don't know, this is all over the place, but... Uh, her daughter was mad with her and left her, but then she came back. I think they said her boyfriend died too, uh, her hybrid lover. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, but then she, uh, but she also did this with Hugh Jackman and Van Helsing. And I heard they were going to make a sequel to that too, but they never did. <laughs> I said, why? <laughs> that could have been good. I love the Frankenstein monster, in this one. but it's got like werewolf, vampire, uh, Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde, and all like League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I need to get that movie too. All right, next to the werewolf movies. You got American Werewolf in London. Awesome. Love the effects, but I hate he had to go through that painful transformation. Well, ah. Then we got the original Wolfman, which I need to get the other movies that go with this series, too, because they had, like, Werewolf of London and She-Wolf of London. <laughs> and then um, we got the remake down here, which I thought the remake was awesome, but love how Ed the Hawkins became a werewolf when he was fighting his son. I was going like, oh man, that was off the charts. And I love how the, the wolf cane had a sword in it. I said, that was neat. Then they got Wolf with Jack Nicholson and Michelle Pfeiffer. And it's weird that he worked with Tim Burton as the Joker and she worked with him as Catwoman. And now they're both together, even though this ain't by Tim Burton, but two Tim Burton actors got together for this. <laughs> Finally, I don't have all the movies for this series, but it's the creature from the Black Lagoon. I'm not a huge fan of this creature per se, but I love it as part of the Universal Monster line. But anyway, uh, that that's it for now. Like, subscribe. And I'm sorry this thing took too long, but uh, stay tuned for more. And hit like and hit those post notifications, and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.